because all parents looking at their children, they don't really give a damn about their exam results. Not, not really. Um, they just want to know that their characters are being brushed, toughened, being made flexible, you know, um, unenthralled, ability to be happy. You know, this is what you want as a, yeah. a, a parent, isn't it? Yeah. Welcome back to the Graveyard Shift. I'm Nathan Rouse. And I'm James Pugh. And today we're going to feel particularly inferior because we're joined <laughs> by the eminent headmaster of Recon College, Tim Firth. Uh, Tim created headlines earlier this year by saying the idea that everyone should go to university created absurd and unnecessary pressure. Uh, it's quite a bold thing for an independent head to say. And I'm interested, Tim, to know whether you got much support for your stance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I guess I'd preface my remarks by saying uh, they weren't driven by me wanting to protect children from, uh, to quote you, unnecessary pressure. Um, uh, it was simply that the um, university system is essentially broken in that it's just not fit for purpose. Uh, and that's driving so many employee uh, employers to look beyond the degree back to A-level, for example, which is a more reliable indication of whether people can work under pressure and possibly even how bright they are. Uh, and, and one could prove that by simply looking at the number of firsts that universities give out in a self-serving way to make sure that the next generation apply to them. So employers aren't daft. They just look at this and think, what, what's this told me about you? I didn't know 18. So on the one hand, it's a little bit bonkers. Everybody really working at university and schools knows this. It's a question of you know, how often they say it and publicly and to whom. So that, that was what was driving it. In terms of support, well, I didn't put it so brutally uh, you know, to, 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 fellow, to fellow heads and to universities. Um, but if you mean, did I get people writing emails to me uh, a year after uh, the headline appeared in newspapers, then the answer is yes. I did get people um, privately say, you know, quite right, good for you. Um, that was brave. Was it stupid? But as an independent school, you'd have assumed that, that parents who send their kids there want the very best, and they, the assumption is that the very best is university. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right, and I hope they continue to put uh, us under pressure to want the very best. It's a question of just um, re redefining terms for them, if need be, uh, educating them. I think actually at Rekin now, we're a few years on from the business school, and a few years on from selling to prospective parents and current parents uh, the idea that it's a horse for a course and that university might or might not be right. But um, if you can get into a top uh, 10, shall we call it, university, that's one thing, and that might speak in the workplace. But if you're not getting in, if you're getting into one of the um, less impressive universities, shall we put it, uh, that might not be a good use of money. And actually, we might be selling uh, a dud to the child. We might be sending the child into a world of delusion as well. You know, what's the point in doing that? Let's talk about what they might do. Uh, which they could be good at and the, the, the world needs. And is that opening up now? Are then, are then, are then employers realising that, are they changing their criteria for, for choosing? Are they thinking, well, we've got to get to these kids before they go to university? I think there's, we'll lose there's some evidence of that. Yeah, OK. Um, I, I think, and only today I talked to a boy, actually, who's got himself on a PWC scheme again. So I tell you that, Nathan, live Great. on stage. Great. Uh, it's happened again. We've got two last year. Um, and uh, they've backed, PWC look like they're backing uh, it up to 18-year-olds and seeing um, if they can make a judgment there. I think a lot of employers are setting their own tests in the same way that um, you know, universities have had to set their own tests when they worried about the efficacy of A-level results. So it's, it's almost as if the system is handing on problems to the next uh, layer. And I think employers are now setting their own um, scrutinies. And I don't just mean interview because that's old money. I mean interview plus a series of tests to find out whether the people are bright, um, flexible and so on. And not just the PwC guys, I guess. You kind of want every, you know, yeah. a, a bunch of Shropshire employees to go, well, hold on a second, university might not be the thing for us. I, I think if, I'm sure Shropshire is probably wiser than London. Mm. Um, and I'm sure that, yeah, I'm sure that yeah, they're think, <laughs> they must they must be looking at the first like us and thinking, is this right? What does it say? Can these people actually boil kettles, really? Um, so they, they, they must be all over working out how they're, they must ask questions because they've been forced into it by the system. Let alone going to university and coming out with a third. So, uh, a disgrace, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what, what sort of fool does that? <laughs> yeah. Well, so Tim, so um, am I right in thinking that you started um, Reekin in 2016? You are right. Yes. Um, and what attracted you to the role and the challenge in the first place? That, that's an interesting question. Um, 
We like those here. We like yeah, those no, sorts it's good. of yeah, questions. I, I, yeah, I, I, I was um, good cop, bad cop, as I said. about whether I'd apply for the job. Uh, I was a bit surprised, you know, obviously an error of judgment in, in, in approaching me. <laughs> uh, and um, then the person rang back and they seemed to know quite a bit about me. So I suppose I thought, well, they're serious. So it'd be rude not to be serious back. I made a visit and immediately I thought I want to apply for a job at Rekin because I just thought it was a fantastic uh, vibe, as the ghastly Americans would put it. I just sensed that there was a r right old variety of people at the school, but they had a common denominator of sort of decency. They seemed to collaborate. The school had some fantastic kit, did a whole bunch of stuff I approved of. Uh, and I just felt a willingness of the community to pull together. And I was a bit sort of seduced by it, actually. And what was the reputation at the school at the time? I, I don't know. I mean, I lived in Sussex at the time. Um, if I'd asked people at the school in Sussex, have you heard of Rekin? Uh, I think those, those in the know would have said, yes, HMC school, lying in Shropshire. Um, you know, and, and some would have said, what, you know, Rekin, Rekin. Um, so I don't think it was, it's not famous down there. Um, but everybody who knows anything about schools knew it was an HMC school. So that's like an Egon Rone guide, you know, kite mark for schools. Um, it must be pretty good. So I, I knew it was, I knew it was a, a pretty good application. I was very flattered to be asked to do it. But was it, did you get a, were you challenged in terms of, was the, did the governors go, not only do we want a new head, we also want X in that new head. We want, we want that something that you're going to need to tackle. Did they outline the challenges? Because, I mean, I know there'd been, there'd been a number of heads for a variety of reasons. Yeah. Pre, and I remember our first chat, yes. which was, oh, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. How long are you going to be here? <laughs> and, yeah. uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because, you, you know, you want to follow on often. You know, schools yes. have a strategic development and a plan and they go, well, this person fits the mould yeah. and then it's that. But you were quite different in that. Uh, well, yes, what an irony. Because I, I suppose they thought they needed to be a bit cautious and get some um, <laughs> sort of boring person. I mean, they, they were half right. Uh, you know, I am boring. But uh, I think you're right, Nathan. Uh, it was a bit choppy. So... So in answer to your question, they were concerned I'd hang around for a bit and, and I spent, they spent some time digging around me domestically and personally to yeah. see whether I was the sort of bloke who would stick around a bit. And, and then they were interested in how I would play um, the, the balls it lay. And it, it, um, they knew that the school needed some sort of reformation because uh, I think part and parcel of the coming and going was that some things had been neglected. Um, so... They knew the school needed some evolution. Indeed, that's the word the chairman used. Um, an intelligent steer for me, actually. He said, uh, I think the drill was for me speaking in a live interview, uh, talk about an enlightened evolution. So Ooh. it needs some change, but don't please hit it with a hammer because there have been a few bosses and you know, these people need looking after. So I thought that was intelligent. Um, mm. So that, I spoke to that motion and that's what I've been trying to do, actually. Okay. Evolve it because that's the job of any uh, MD, isn't it? Um, to change it rather than just work at it and all that. Um, but do it uh, whilst liking it. Mm. What changes have you made? Almost none at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he's leaving. I'm so sorry. Um, it hasn't worked. Uh, it was yeah. a great experiment, a costly one. I, I, I find myself <laughs> um, in a strange position of being probably, uh, though my staff might laugh at this or some of them, a, a reasonable man manager. And I think one of the fears in appointing me was that I perhaps wouldn't necessarily change enough. You know, I wonder whether the occupational um, questionnaire I filled in, you know, what might have suggested that. Yeah. But I find myself having changed um, loads of things and finding it uh, refreshing to have done so. And I think one of the reasons why um, I'm not the man I married or I'm surprised by <laughs> the fact I, I, I've been known as a change agent by some of the staff who think mm. they know or, and the parents who think they know about types you're a change agent it is because the team is so good the, the, my, my senior management team are old enough and ugly enough to run the school on their own and they're so uh, nice as people so collaborative that I gave one a job the other a job and you know, that, okay Tim that's, that's good by us you know, deeply decent people who knew I liked the school and so wanted to come and help the school, and we cracked on. So we changed loads of things. We've put up lots of new buildings. Uh, we changed the academic um, system of tracking, uh, root and branch, made lots of new appointments of different tiers in the organogram, um, started business school, which wasn't my idea. It was the chairman's idea and some of the governors who actually uh, put some personal money into it. Um, but I, I, so I was, I was asked whether I approved of this, 
Did I want to row back? No, not at all. And then we start to accelerate away a little bit in terms of um, the big idea, uh, which we've touched on already, about what horses and what courses. Yeah. But I guess that there's that thing that sort of says, uh, if you're if you're stepping back, as it's uh, not an exclusive, but um, you are you are leaving post at the end of the academic year to kind of obviously understand you were brought in to transform, to to enlighten and uh, an evolutionary process. So so obviously you would feel that you're leaving the school in a better position, <laughs> but you're also setting quite a high benchmark for um, the successor. And and are you involved in that process? Is that something? Well, I, that... I haven't deliberately, you know, set a high bar to watch somebody <laughs> jump under it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the job, isn't it, to try and make things better. Um, and I, I suppose I shall deceive myself in thinking I have. Uh, it's not for me to say in the end, is it? It's, it's for pupils and parents to... You know, uh, make the decision about that. Um, the I'm not exactly sure formally. I know what my part in the process is, but I've got a very flexible chairman who who has um, talked to me about the process. I did meet the six um, short-ish listed candidates. Right. Uh, it's been boiled off, boiled off to four. They're coming back next week, so this is pretty hot off the press. Fantastic! It is um, hot off. And, and so yeah, and and uh, I was invited to uh, the wash up session as it's Great, called yes. in the trade isn't it to t- talk about my findings with each of the characters the six who saw me for half an hour i think their job was to pick my brain despite the fact they were given half an hour <laughs> <laughs> um and um and then sort of say what i thought uh, in contradistinction possibly to the panel who'd met them together so that, that's that's so it's an open thing but th- i'm sure i won't get a say in who they appoint a strange that would be process. madness it must be strange though because you're now involved in a process of which you were part of yeah. six and a half years ago yeah. um to sort of see what that wash-up process was like it must be quite interesting just to it's a it's a, it's a forerunner and a, and a view of the future at the same time yeah it's exciting work i mean i i, I like the idea of selecting people for jobs one of the my, delights of my job is to pick people yeah. uh, and back them you know, pupils uh, with uh, innovative ideas, staff who come to me with ideas, promote people. You know, I think my job is to say yes 90% of the time at least and not no to almost anything I'm asked because you've just got to let people go and back them. So the idea of yeah, appointing somebody who in an uber sense has got the role uh, is exciting and it's something I'd quite like to do in the future actually, uh, you know read horse flesh and work out which one, yeah, which one's the back but i guess then reek in 2016 versus reek in 2022 you can do the stats you will know the school is is it in better shape has it got more pupils is it a better uh, slt i mean what, yeah. what how do you benchmark a- again you know you're partly asking the wrong man because i'm bound to write my own encomium you get, um you get the opportunity but, but <laughs> I, I suppose in empiric sitting sticking to empirical facts yeah the school is nearly 50 percent bigger than it was in 2016. So by one metrics by which successful schools are judged and possibly heads, you know, has it got bigger? Um, that's, the, it's the, that's probably the only question that most governors really, you know, <laughs> want, want to come back to. And I don't blame them, actually, because it only gets bigger if other things have gone right. You can't deceive a whole bunch of people. You can deceive a few. God knows I've tried. Um, but you can't deceive that many people. Um, so uh, we've got a bigger role We've opened a lot of new resources, a lot of buildings. I could sort of list them, but there's been you know one or two every year for the last sort of six years. Um, and our results, you know, this, this is the way I think schools are judged: the three R's, not reading, writing, arithmetic, but results, uh, resources, the role. Uh, they're, the, they're the three R's, and the metrics by which I've made it very clear to my team, um, you know, we're judging ourselves. Um, we've also had a development plan, uh, which is about sort of micro and macro things. Um, it, it's a kind of a bit of a, a list on a fridge with a fridge magnet. But that existed before you arrived. No, was there, it no, no, it oh, didn't. It didn't. No, okay. no, it, it didn't really. It was partly to do with the regime change. I think. I think one person in post had begun a development plan, um, but in 1978. Uh, <laughs> no, well, more <laughs> but it was it was sort of sawn off, a bit abandoned. Um, so that, that's that's where it was, and it, it's been great. Uh, with the team and the team means the whole school to do a two-year plan and we've embarked upon our second one and you were always going to spend this amount of time or were you i mean you know you plenty of life left in in this old dog i'd have assumed um but would you would you did you think it was going to be a six seven year gig were you thinking ten my five, chairman two? Uh, was very clear in offering the baton to me he said this is a five to seven year uh, gig 
uh, you know, as far as they were concerned, and I said, that's fair enough. Um, I'll be coming up to sort of 59 and a half. Um, children always count halves, don't they? <laughs> uh, so, you know, so for me, that echoed a little bit. I've done, I'll have done seven years. Uh, my daughter left uh, last year. Um, they're all off my hands now, my children, fantastic. Some of them have roofs and money. Um, so, yeah, a little bit... A little, their own money? Uh, their own money, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, perfect. So, uh, <laughs> chucking all that into the mix, uh, it just felt about right. I think in the end, it's, it's, you just feel it's about right, don't you? I, I love the school. And no. it's been very easy to stay at the school. And it would be very nice to take the money, you know, but I'm not sure that's right. I, I think the next person needs to come on and say, right, what's the next thing for this place? You've touched on the business school. Um, mm. You recently appointed a new head of business school. We did. Um, where do you see the business school you know, heading um, now yeah. that it's under new direction? Thanks for asking, James. Um, <laughs> uh, I had a meeting with the SMT and invited in Darren Blanche, who's the new head of business school, very, very able bloke, PwC. That's where he Thumbs up. Uh, went uh, straight from Cambridge University. That's a university probably still worth going to. Uh, he's a bright <laughs> lad. Um, and the next uh, phase is to, yes, to continue with some of the exciting things that it's done, but to be hypercritical, it's had some flash and some bang and possibly some wallop, but it's not absolutely sufficiently in the warp and weft of the school. And in the last discussion, uh, it, it was all about letting the SMT know that uh, we need to get employability a little bit more into the curriculum so that it's age appropriate but um, the children are encountering the business school as an idea through the medium of uh, maths, numeracy, um, English, communication, and uh, ICT, uh, you know, because computers are the future in the workplace. And this guy is very, very able. And indeed, he's sold exams he's written to examining boards. Uh, and we're producing our own um, sort of wrapper. Uh, and that involves taking over to an extent some of the examples used in English maths and computing. So that uh, they're getting two for the price of one, getting better at maths, but all the examples Great. might come out of the world of business, commerce, uh, reading business sheets. And, uh, we can just see that making the boat go faster for the business school and for maths. And from entry level for, for, for the school children, so from yeah. 11 up rather than yeah. a sort of yes. 14 or 16? Yeah, or... yeah all, all the way through. Okay. Um, so that... I think that's, that's kind of where it's going next. It's being dug into the roots as well as decorating the branches. And have you listened to local employers, you know, struggling to recruit? And, you know, is this part of the idea had, that you're going to help? We had the Chamber yeah. today. We had the Chamber of Commerce, the, 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 the chief exec sort of saying it's all about skills. And, and Shropshire struggling like lots of others. Yeah. The location, you know, people yeah. trying to get to here using us as an example, um, or you uh, as an example, <laughs> to find you. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's not that easy. And so skills and employability and the sort of entrepreneurial skills you want to kind of encourage and create. I mean, that, you know, my children, are, I, my father was in the services, mum was, was a nurse. There was no kind of entrepreneurial yeah. endeavour in well, the Rouse house. I'm sure um, looking at their son, I suspect there was a bit of entrepreneurial flavour in them. But you're right, expressing it, <laughs> mm. giving conduits to express it, uh, even less likely than having it. Yep. Um, and we thought in very narrow silos, didn't we? Uh, I think actually these skills are a bit more transferable these days. People realise that they're going to dot around. We've been saying this for 20 years in the yeah, workplace. Agreed. And there's some evidence it's happening. Um, but it's, I think educationally at school, schools need to take that on uh, and um, not just pass the problem on in the forms of GCSEs to the next step and universities to employers. I think um, it's beholden on, on everybody to have a go at getting ready the, the, the future workforce. Yeah. One thing I've really noticed actually at Recon is the number, is the flow through then of, of services and providers coming into the school, which seems like it's a natural thing in business. You would have a mix. You would have lots of people coming through here, different sort of providers and professional yeah. services and collaboration. Yeah. And schools in, and of old always used to, well, our teachers taught business studies for the last 30 years. He's perfectly good at this. Why on earth would we need anybody else? But I think, Breakin has shown, I guess, it needed the business school to have that opportunity it did. To, to flag wave. It did, and it was very brave of the governing body, literally, to put the money where uh, that, uh, that mouth was. Uh, and it's a bit different, because I think most schools haven't got one. Now, they've got a business place in, in which the academic subjects are taught. We've got four academic subjects, by the way, which is about two more for the next one, because we do accounting 
uh, A-level, for heaven's sake, very popular with people from Ukraine, um, you know, from China. Uh, it's a bit of a niche thing. So we've got, a, we, academically we're doing lots of this, um, but it was, it was the whole uh, temple to employability beyond that academic. Um, and so that was a bit different, actually, Nathan. I think, and I think, you know, I, whenever I talk about what we're trying to do to produce a people, yes, with the grades to open doors, but where, the wherewithal to know which one to go through and what to do when they go on the other side, the parents increasingly drink this up they, they, they love this because they're, they're worried it. about it. Yeah, Probably because some of them, worried. you know, they, they work for a living like the rest of us. And they're sort of, they're seeing it. And um, I would say that's one of the big reasons for the school's growth, actually. That we, uh, we know that rugby is important per se, but we're also trying to teach um, a bit more explicitly, you know, being in a team, running a team, getting shut up and getting in the pack <laughs> when it's the right time. You know, being led, leading... Uh, and we're more conscious in the language we use around things like that, being the CCF, Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, we even call the CCF and Duke of Edinburgh uh, character adventure training. It's called CAT, and, th and there's somebody I put in charge of it. And so the language is self-consciously around coaching people to get in the pack and run the pack and link it to their futures. And it isn't just Emperor's New Clothes in the sense that we've literally put a lot of money behind this and we're constantly trying to uh, improve it. And there's, there's, there's a lot we need to do to improve it. But I think we're, we're going at that, whereas, you know, grammar schools, this is no attack on grammar schools, but they, 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 that's not their issue. They just won't even think about that. And a lot of schools don't think about it particularly. Or careers are a sort of bolt-on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, but I wonder if that's because partly the parental demographic has changed. Um, it's interesting to, to, to see maybe 30 years ago, there wouldn't have been the sort of business owner, entrepreneur, uh, even, you know, sole business owner, you know, sole traders. There's lots of people yeah. um, at the school gate who aren't sort of, you know, huge accountants or big lawyers or whatever. They're, they're, they're running their own, their own, yeah. their own gig. Yeah. Um, and maybe that helps too. Maybe the parents were. Did you find that parents yeah, being inspired I, well, by the business school uh, and being I, delighted that their kids had an opportunity that they never had? Yes. Um, and believe it or not, um, and this is ironic really, because we should have sort of been more aware of it than I was. But when I went back to Bailey, um, who was the founder of Rekin, um, I read somewhere in a historical book that he was interested in sort of producing pupils who would be of some use in the world. <laughs> you know, so he had half an eye. Yeah. Radical thinking for a head. Um, <laughs> and so he had, half, he had a half an eye on this 150 years ago. And I thought, gosh, we could have made more of this as we marketed this new idea, you know, ancient and modern. We didn't. I think it's latently always been there. The governors, most of the governors are self-made, very wealthy people through their own businesses. So many people out of their own business money are funding pupils to reek in. So it speaks very much to the demographic, but, you know, to answer your question. I think we're, we're ripe for it. Whether, you know, um, this would be as possible in Surrey, uh, you know, with, with that kind of backdrop, if all parents were medics and lawyers, I don't know. Mm. Hey, talking about giving back, actually, uh, just one thing that, that sparked the, the, the sort of idea was the Foundation Day, um, which was, you talk about governors being sort of self-made and wealthy and the parent body being great and uh, independent schools particularly coming under some sort of fire for, are they doing enough to support, assist other schools in the area? VAT um, in the news today? Oh, grammar schools yesterday. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there, there are some changes afoot. Um, but, but the Foundation Day, just explain what you set up and what it was uh, aimed to achieve. Thank you very much for that opportunity. Um, I'll take that one. Um, the Foundation is unashamedly a, uh, a committee which drives an operation that's designed uh, sort of unifocally to raise money for bursarial funds, to bring to Rekin pupils whose parents just would not have a chance of accessing it. It sounds a little bit high and mighty because, you know, there are other really good schools available. But we happen to believe that we're one of the best in the area. And we're, we happen to believe that if you get to Rekin and you work closely with us and we're lucky enough to have you, um, that, that it actually can alter, you know, your horizons. Um, and rather impressively, you know, one uh, parent who, who's paying for a child who's not their own in perpetuity... Uh, has done so simply because he said to me, Tim, um, my dad went to an independent school 
on a free place. He was he was given this opportunity, and he he told me that you know without that there wouldn't be a you, <laughs> uh, and it's as simple as that. This stuff really matters. So uh, that's a really stark. It's a it's a really stark kind of uh, example there. No, it's um, really nice to hear and, that and, and to have someone come back so, on that. So, so that's what that's what we're doing, and we've reformed the the committee, and it's a bit more unashamedly Bob Geldof these days. <laughs> you know, we we just we just think there's no problem with this deeply moral contract of saying, "Gizzy your money." Uh, for this cause. This is not about laying down an astroturf or a swimming pool. You know, I feel strongly that, um, obviously, we won't stop people giving money. <laughs> you know, if, if, no, you know, we're not if, having that money I, for the astro. I, I, want, I want to give you a 50-metre swimming pool. You know, I mean, I'd probably persuade them not to do it and give money to the foundation, but if they insisted on the swimming pool, I'd, I wouldn't stand in their way. Um, but this is all about, um, you know, money goes straight into fees. Uh, we don't we don't take any fat out of it. It goes straight into fees. And most people, you know, like that, they want to be sure where their money's going. And, of course, what an easy thing. You know, you know, I'm not a salesman, really, but I find it very easy to go up to anybody and say, well, uh, you know, it's a question of how much you've got. You'll give me something. How much can you, can you give me? Um, and that's what that foundation committee does. Uh, and so um, we appointed a director of the foundation. She was a very, very good uh, sort of young thruster, very able um, she went off and learned the science of how to run a development office, how to um, you know get funds, and she did it very successfully well. And our first uh, giving day raised a decent amount of money. Well, a massive amount of money, really. If you think about, if you yeah. if you think about, I mean, you know, given our first nearly hundred grand, it was pretty. Yes. It was pretty fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and and you know, I'd like to thank uh, publicly anybody, if anybody's listening to this, uh, you know, anybody who thought about doing it and indeed did it. Yeah. And also, I think that what, one of those things, it felt very, um, like the whole school was involved. It was sort of comic relief, children in need yes. It was totalizers, running totals, yeah. updates. It was, a, it was a great way of going it, after. It, and, and, it's, um, and it isn't just an adjunct to the school. I mean, the school and the foundation should be the same stuff. It's about, uh, it's about believing in a good education. It's about wanting people to join our community. Uh, of a really various sort. We've got 25 people, 25 countries around the world at the school. We've got people, half the intake at 11 plus is from state school primaries, half is from um, prep schools. This is a real, really diverse, you know, d diversity and inclusion that the buzzwords um, of, of the moment Rekin's always been like that, and it's wanting to do more and more like that. Isn't it funny, though, from the outside, when people talk about independent schools, there's this automatic yes, discounting of us. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's horrendous. Mm. Yeah, just looking at the sort of wider education industry, I'm going to play bad cop now. You know, what are the main... <laughs> we uh, said it was coming. <laughs> Good. Yeah. What are the main, you know, issues, you know, going forward for what, schools? Face, so independent schools or all schools? Well, all schools, really. I think... Um, I think an examination that's fit for purpose, uh, by which I mean completely believable to the next consumer of it, is really important. And I think there's a bit of a crisis there. I think that crisis, as we've touched upon, is really crystallised uh, more at university level, because I think I still think that A level, uh, and indeed B tech, are much more reliable kite marks. IB diploma, very much, uh, you know, st still um, currency that's that's worth something. Degrees aren't really. There's a real problem, isn't there? I mean, it's an intake my, of breath. <laughs> my, own, my own daughter uh, went off to uni a um, month ago, whatever it was, up to Durham. Good university, you know, probably worth going to. She, she got in off her own merit. I did take the liberty of looking at Platinate, which was the Durham University um, paper. Um, and uh, some wise old bird on the inside looked at the number of grades that were being given out. And in English literature, which is her degree, 97% of pupils were awarded either a first or a 2-1. So I didn't think, well, she could go down to the pub and have a drink and she'll be fine. But you can see this, 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 there's a problem in, in the sector. And I, I'd hate to think my daughter would make to pay for this remark. But yeah. uh, there is, there is a, I think that's where the educational problem really is. You know, and all these people who say, why aren't bright people a la bright young Germans going off to different sorts of places to learn different sorts of things? I think they're right, aren't they? Yeah. Um, you know, my granddad used to do the Times crossword in about half an hour, but he left school at 12. You know, uh, he's obviously a very, very bright bloke. But what was so special about university? So I, I, think, I think that's the absolute nub of it. And, and so schools' problems, uh, I think, are going to become a little bit, well, 
you have to think a bit more broadly about where you're going to if employers end up thinking degrees aren't any good because too many schools just pump into unis. So this problem will back up. And it's interesting because this isn't stuff that parents sometimes want to hear, which is why it's a brave, yeah. it's a bra- brave point. You know, a, a person, parents bring their children to, to, to an independent school and I think, right, well, this yeah. is them set for 21, yeah. um, 18 and uh, yours, and then three somewhere else or four. Um, so the fact that there is, uh, maybe they just haven't been thinking about an alternative because of it's always been put down the alternative to university i mean i didn't go to university i didn't feel i did i probably i did for a bit felt oh god all my friends have gone to university yes. but i kind of blagged my way onto a postgrad course um based on work experience and, and without and, wishing to fill you full of helium no. you know, had you had you applied you got into one of the top 20 it's as yeah. simple as that but you just you just you and your parents thought differently yeah and agreed. that's what i'm saying about my my granddad mm. so it's uh, it's a bit odd this assumption uh, you know, education, education, education. I think it was Blair said that, didn't he? Yeah, it's indeed. kind of gone a strange route since mm. or around about that time. And therefore, if, if, if education is changing in, in terms of what the output is mm. right at the end, so this 18 to 21, mm. obviously you have to provide enough diversity in that education from 11 to 18 to give them all those options. But that makes Reekin a busier place, more staff, more courses it's certainly more, more ambitious i mean yeah. if, if you I, I went to stockport grammar and um it was simpler back then you know uh you said to the careers person one of three different areas of you know professional <laughs> life as you play and uh, you know you went into those silos and then you just focused on your, your maths and english um so you're right that that's a simpler thing to rig up if we take seriously the discussion we're having you, you need to have an awful lot of opportunities in order to sort of compel pupils to take them, to get them ready to be flexible and so on. That's a lot of money in, in human resources and facilities and a lot of moving parts and more to coordinate. But any good school, and I think HMC schools are good schools. I mean, it's not just that Regan's alone in doing this. Maybe we're doing a bit more of it. We're certainly trying to focus a bit more on it. Um, but independent schools have always known that, you know, the co-curricular really matters. And, and, and the, uh, the curriculum really matters. So they've always invested in a whole bunch of stuff. It's really sad at the moment, isn't it, that the state school sector, which is being starved of money, is having to prioritise maths. Who can blame it? You know, I would. But, you know, so music's dying. Mm. Um, there might even be a drift, despite the cost of living. There might even be a paradoxical drift towards fee-paying schools as the state sector gets more and more shrunk. And it's not, not simply because, you know, um, parents who don't know anything think, um, you know, uh, independent schools uh, are just better per se. It'll be that they really worry about this um, shrinking back of mm. opportunities for children to roam around in to get stronger at characters. Because all parents looking at their children, they don't really give a damn about their exam results. Not, not really. Um, they just want to know that their characters are being brushed, toughened, being made flexible you know, um, unenthralled ability to be happy. You know, this is what you want as a, yeah. a, a parent, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think there's a real chance that they'll look at uh, schools that are shrinking and shrinking and think that these, are, these outcomes are less likely. Yeah. I mean, I remember talking to, to Simon Platford, your director of music, esteemed no, he Mr. Is Platford. Good. He is really good. Yes. But, uh, but he was saying that the more, you, saying to the kids, the more you do, the better you do. Yeah. And um, more, I think more begets like, more. Well, we're in at eight and we don't go till six as it is. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's still, that is, a, is it an element of pressure or is it just talking about the facts? I mean, well, you, you read I these amazing stories of entrepreneurs who I, get up at three in yeah. the morning and go to bed at midnight and yes. back up at three and they're just doing a million things. Thanks. And as you know, Nathan, um, you know, we have them at Reekin. We've got people who are partly contributing towards their own fees through the money they make in their private business. Mm. Th- these are teenagers. And I always you know, stand in awe and look at my boots when, they, <laughs> when I'm talking to them. Um, but uh, I think Reekin is a very sane place. Um, uh, there are schools I've worked in, certainly you know, some southeastern public schools, where it's all about how good you are at stuff. Um, and, and it's highly competitive. And so kids, when, when children become adolescent, they really become very self-conscious if you're not careful. Mm. I mean, uh, you, you might even remember it. Um, and, but Arikin, um, we, we just basically say, 
have a go at it. If, if, if you're good at it, that's cheating. Well done. You know, you'll get better. But if, and we've got people who are off the scale good at stuff, but uh, most of us just get a bit better when we have a go. And it's a fair contract. The pupils know it's, it, I'm only being asked, will I attempt this? And if it's quite hard, will I keep going? That's a fair fight. And I think actually we get that culture. I must give a puff to the school. And this, this is not my contribution. I think the reason I took the job, James, back to your question, I think it was, it, it was I just think that's really palpable. So they just have a go at stuff and they get better in doing it. And they're not, they're not oppressed or burnt out or tense. You know, I mean, I'm touching wood here, but I, I, I would seriously advance the idea that the mental health um, of Rikinians is, is a little bit more sturdy than other places. You touched on it. Um, what are some of the pupils doing? You said they're running their own businesses. What are they doing? Well, we've got a... a, a, a PR, a, marketing, yeah. comms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, old boys included here. Yes, um, hey, Jack, take a yeah. nod. <laughs> um, we, we've got uh, one boy who sold a, uh, a computer game, What He Wrote, to paraphrase Ernie Wise, uh, to a toy firm in the Ukraine before the war broke. Yeah, I mean, making some proper money out of it. Um, as Nathan knows, we opened a shop in the high street uh, before COVID, Retro Shack, uh, when uh, one of the business um, groups entered a competition to win £20,000. I have to say, I thought it was figurative money, but it turned out to be <laughs> £20,000. Actual uh, 20000 So, so they, they opened this business. Um, since that, uh, I gave quite a bit of money, £16,000, to a group of pupils in the sixth form who made a pitch to me and the bursa and our director of marketing to open a coffee shop, uh, a portable coffee shop in a horse box. Um, you know, I'm not that stupid. I did find out what a reconditioned horse box could be reflogged on for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and off they go, and they run the business. And if it goes badly, it's their lookout. Um, the office for the new head, is, yeah. that, the, is that the horse <laughs> box will be rep yeah. repurposed? And it's a damn good coffee. I I've never heard anybody say anything other than this is like a high street coffee. The pupils are running that. So they're, they're little flavours. Tim um, is drinking green tea, by the way, just so yeah. I'd point that out uh, for podcast only. And very good it is too. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in terms of changes as well, we, we, we talked about some of the issues that are facing uh, education and also what the future of education looks like mm. with, with the pandemic. And I'm kind of stealing uh, James's question here, really. Um, but just trying to look at the online learning did Recon do better than other schools in adapting? Was it luckier than most? Well, or? I'm pleased you've narrowed it down, this question to, you know, what happened in, in COVID, because I feel I'm very thin ice talking about the future of education. Uh, and I'm bowing I, out. I feel enormously sort of pompous. <laughs> yeah, apart from the fact that, <laughs> yes, I'm not going to be playing cram green bowls, but um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I'm not comfortable with questions like, you know, what is, what will, what, what will it look like? I know that Dr. Anthony Selden, um, ex-head uh, at Wellington College, has talked about AI and, and the, you know, the AI. sun... The, 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 <laughs> AI. He's from Wakefield as well. <laughs> <He is. laughs> the sunlit uplands of, you know, the future of education. I, I just don't know how he knows, really. But, um, yeah, in answer to your question, uh, the school got bigger, uh, you know, uh, the role got bigger, and we had a number of people who defected from both state and independent schools. Um, when they realised that you know, uh, the team at Rekin were really cracking on from the get-go. Uh, in fact, I was, perhaps it's just again naive, but we were completely driven by fear. You know, we charge money for education. So <laughs> yes. you, what are we going to do to keep this running, to justify charging? We, we reduced the fee, we reduced it up front, and I think that appealed to some parents who thought it was fair, rather than just retrospective rebates. Um, and we really went into bat fast, uh, putting the whole thing online, assemblies, tutorials, even P lessons, um, you know, uh, as well as the whole academic thing. Um, and, yeah, I think it was done very well. I mean, I, I'm computer illiterate. Um, so this is, you know, like most good things about the school, nothing to do with me, but, my God, the team worked hard. Yes. And um, we, we got bigger. And I think our parents, you know, nice people, honest, frank, they can break your nose with a home truth. Um, but, you know, they, they, they basically sort of said, this is really good. I, I've heard it's rubbish at my mate's school. So, you know, well, well done. Well done, the team at Rika. Great. And we yeah, got bigger. We got, and our boarding got bigger. Um, there, there are a few paradoxes there. Mm. And has any of the online learning um, continued? Good or? question. Um, yes. I mean, I think online learning, you know, building your uh, learning hub, as we call it, other schools call it something different, um, 
there's so much good stuff now, isn't there, that, that's recoverable um, you know, off YouTube alone. So all departments have got a whole buckets of stuff that they can um, point to for extension exercises or to embed in lessons, clips that have been put together, talking heads, podcasts, you know. Um, this is my first, uh, but some pupils have already done 10, you know. This, <laughs> so, yeah, that industry, James, is, 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 is out there and being built. Mm. Whether Rekins is better than the next independent school, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't um, claim to know that. Mm. But, but, yes, um, it's shifting. It was very interesting, though. Uh, one of the worries going into COVID was, Lord, if this is, goes really well you know, why bother going into a school? Mm. And after all, this is the currency of children. You know, they spend their whole lives in at least three realms. I can hardly <laughs> cope with one. But, you know, they're, they're, they're on WhatsApp and they're doing this and they multitask. Yes. Um, and to a man and a woman, they all said, it's much better in the classroom. We need humans really? around That's us. Really I have to say, as somebody who's nearly dead, this was very, um, this was really heartening that there was no Brilliant. distinction between 12-year-olds and 59-year-olds. No distinction. Uh, and, I, and I was really surprised by that. Oh, real lesson, so much better, sir. You know, the, the vibe in the class, um, you know, s sitting with people in, in real space. I thought... Really? With germs, germs. Yeah, yeah that's right. Love, Inoculating you know, yourself against cold. to get germs. So, so that, that's interesting. That's really that tells me that the appetite for the real classroom strongly remains. Yeah. You said you weren't going to do crown green bowls. <laughs> What, what is the... We, flat green bowls. Um, flat green. Is what I'm going to do. Nice. Uh, more it's a very specific answer. Wakefield. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, I don't... I really have no idea. And I was pleased to meet somebody yesterday um, who's a governor at an independent school who came from the allied schools to look round. And she said, what are you doing? And I said, I don't know. She said, I did the same thing 10 years ago. I said, oh, we must talk further because it, it does seem slightly odd not to... I know what I'd, li I'd like to do a bit of uh, sort of headhunting. I've alluded to that earlier, yeah. you know. Um, but who will have me? I'd like to teach six forms English, but, you know, I can't work a computer. Who would have International? Me? International uh, Horizons? Well, I can't say I haven't been approached Great. to, to um, you know, be a head of a school overseas. Um, that's not my fault that I've been approached. Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. Okay. And I, for the first time in 37 years of teaching, might have to sit in a chair over Christmas and think, who am I?